So momentum is represented with the lowercase p, and it is a vector. And we'll talk about the units for momentum in a second. The equation for momentum is mass times velocity. And so that makes the units of momentum kilogram meter per second. So there's a couple different reasons why we care about momentum. Uh, so one of the important things is just like energy had a conservation law, momentum is also going to have a conservation law. So there's conservation of momentum. And so that equation is just like the conservation of energy, where you just have whatever momentum you start with has to be the same as the momentum that you end with. Now, the other reason that we care about momentum is due to its relationship with forces. So uh, this is kind of an aside. So you won't, some of these applications you'll need to know, but the theory behind this you don't uh, because it has to do with calculus. But uh, when I told you that this was Newton's second law equation, this is true if your mass doesn't change. But if mass changes, then what your force equation really is, is the derivative of momentum with respect to time. And so again, uh, this, is, this is a derivative. So this is calculus. So you don't need to know this. Uh, but the implications of this are that, uh, so what I, what I can write instead and what that you, something that you might need to know for this class is that a derivative can be approximated as just the change in momentum over change in time. And remember this, Capital triangle delta means um, just P final minus P initial over T final minus T initial. So if we, if we take this over to the next slide, then and we look at our equation for momentum if we take so and if we wanted to change our momentum, there's two things we could change. We could change our mass or we could change our velocity. If we change, so if we change velocity,
then this equation would be, so P final minus P initial would become M B final minus M B initial over T final minus T initial. If I factor out the M, I would have V final minus V initial over T final minus T initial. And remember we said that final minus initial is just Delta V and Delta T. So what is change in velocity over change in time? All right, so this is just MA. So this is why I said, if we keep the mass constant, then your, you just get your F equals MA equation. However, if we change, the mass, now we get some other equation. So M final V minus M initial V over T final minus T initial. So this is some other book kind of thing. So there's not really a name for delta M over delta T. But can you guys think of any situation where you are losing mass or you're pushing mass out of the back to move yourself? So this is basically how rockets work. So you're shooting mass out of the back by burning fuel. Uh, you can push the mass out of the back of you very fast. And that mass being pushed out of the back is what's giving you your force to uh, propel yourself forward. So if, if we just had Newton's second law in the form we wrote up here, then rockets wouldn't work and we wouldn't have satellites, you wouldn't have cell phones. Uh, it would not be as fun to be alive right now. So this change in mass contribution to force is very important and you only really see it if you use this definition for force, which is the change in momentum over change in time. So that's just one application of this new concept momentum that we learned about. And uh, on Wednesday, we will talk about a, another topic called collisions. And depending on the type of collision, there will be either, so momentum will always be conserved. And then depending on the type of collision, energy may or may not be conserved. But we'll talk about that more. Wednesday. <clears throat> but for right now, we'll see some implications of conservation of momentum. We'll do an example problem.
and so let's let's see. Let's say that you're in a boat. And you, maybe you have some boxes. And as somebody suggested, let's say you want it to go faster. So you start tossing these boxes off the boat. So initially you have some velocity, let's say 10 meters per second. And the mass of, so the mass of the boat plus the person is, I don't know, 200 kilograms. And let's say the mass of the boxes is 50 kilograms. And we wanna know if you toss all of those boxes off the boat, what will your final velocity be? And let's say we, we throw them back this way. Yes. What is uh, so you're in a you're in a boat and you're moving at this velocity of ten meters per second. Let's I don't know maybe you're being chased by the cops and you're smuggling stolen stuff in these boxes. So you want to go faster so you can try to get away uh, and maybe also not be caught with illegal stuff. So you toss the boxes off the back and you want to see how fast you'll be going after you throw those boxes off the boat. So the, you'll lose mass because you have, you're losing the mass of the boxes. So yeah, how does that affect the velocity of the boat? So we set this up with our conservation of energy. We have the initial mass times the initial velocity equals the final mass times the final velocity. The initial mass would be the boat, the person, and the boxes, and that would be 250. And then the final mass would just be the boat and the person. So that would be 200. So if we solve for the final velocity, uh, we would divide the final mass to the other side. And so we would get that the final velocity would be Twelve point five meters per second. 
And so you might be thinking to yourself, uh, couldn't we have used conservation of energy to do this problem? Because we have, with kinetic energy, we have mass and velocity as well. Uh, but we'll see on Wednesday that uh, if you have, depending on the type of collision you have, and this is, we'll see that this is a type of collision uh, that energy is not necessarily conserved within this system. Yes. You have to speak up. Uh, oh, this is 250, sorry. So this this one is the 250, and then this one is the 200. Right, this is the initial mass 